Hello class, welcome to lecture 15. And this lecture we're going to cover some topics that are pretty widely related, but they are related nonetheless. And the first topic that we're going to cover in this first segment is going to be the idea of a barotropic versus a baroclinic atmosphere. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So first off, let's discuss what we can expect from what's referred to as a barotropic atmosphere. An atmosphere is said to be barotropic if the density only depends on pressure. So that means temperature is pretty much constant everywhere in a barotropic atmosphere, and that in turn means that you have a relatively weak temperature gradient. The temperature gradient is approximately equal to zero. So, and also density, I should make sure I'm precise here. Density is in fact the density of the air at ground level. Intensity does vary in the vertical, but the main thing is density only is a, varies only with pressure in a barotropic atmosphere. So that implies that temperature is pretty much constant throughout the entirety of a barotropic atmosphere, which implies that the temperature gradient, there basically is none, and if there is one, there's very, it's uh, pretty weak. And we also saw from the thermal wind relationship that if we have a weak temperature gradient, then that means our thermal wind vector is zero, which means our wind shear, our vertical wind shear in the atmosphere is also essentially zero. So if we have no horizontal temperature gradient, we have no vertical wind shear, and we have no thermal wind. And that, again, is a characteristic of a barotropic atmosphere. And another interesting characteristic about a barotropic atmosphere is if you have a cyclone of some sort or some sort of atmospheric disturbance, those cyclones and those waves in the atmosphere will tend to propagate from east to west. And an example of this, well, actually, let me go ahead and throw this other point up on the screen here. The barotropic atmosphere is usually found in the tropical region. So I'll say between about 0 and 30 degrees north in the northern hemisphere and about 0 to 30 degrees south in the southern hemisphere. And between 20 and 40 degrees, uh, there's a bit of a gray area. There's some overlap between barotropic and baroclinic, which the baroclinic is what we're going to cover uh, in a few seconds. But uh, if you think about a tropical cyclone or a hurricane, which is in the tropics, it's between 0 degrees north and 30 degrees north, that tropical cyclone slash hurricane usually moves to some extent to in the westerly direction. It doesn't move west to east like a mid-latitude cyclone does. So that's a, that's a typical, typical characteristic of a very tropical atmosphere is if you have a cyclone or some sort of disturbance, it typically moves from east to west. And again, these are most often observed in the tropics. And one thing that you can do to remember barotropic versus baroclinic, if you want to remember which is which, barotropic has the same letter sequence as tropics. So barotropic, tropic. So uh, if you have a barotropic atmosphere, then you expect to find that in the tropics. So just a bit of an mnemonic, mnemonic, or however you pronounce that word, which is just a fancy word for saying how you can remember something when you're going to memorize it. And then a baroclinic atmosphere, in contrast, is an atmosphere where the density of the air in question depends on both pressure and temperature. And since we have this temperature dependency in density, then this would imply that we have some sort of temperature gradient that we have to worry about, some sort of horizontal temperature gradient, which would then imply that temperature gradient is not equal to zero. But again, from our thermal wind relationship that we looked at in a few lectures back, if you have a strong temperature gradient, then that means you've got a strong thermal wind vector. And that in turn tells you that you've got strong vertical wind shear present in the atmosphere. So baroclinic atmosphere, density depends on temperature as well as pressure, which means you've got a temperature gradient that's pretty significant, which means you've also got a vertical wind shear that is also significant, Con which is in contrast to a barotropic atmosphere, which has no vertical wind shear to speak of. And in a baroclinic atmosphere, the waves and disturbances, that is the cyclones and the waves and all the stuff that happens in a baroclinic atmosphere, those tend to propagate from west to east. And that's usually what you're more accustomed to if you're, say, north of 30 degrees uh, north latitude. And typically, a baroclinic atmosphere is something that you find in the mid-latitude. So it was, say, between about 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north in the northern hemisphere, and between about 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south if you're in the southern hemisphere. But again, just to summarize, barotropic atmosphere, Density only depends on pressure, weak temperature gradient, weak vertical wind shear, usually a characteristic of the tropical regions, versus a baroclinic atmosphere where density depends on both pressure and temperature, meaning you've got temperature gradients, meaning you've got relatively strong vertical wind shear, which is usually a characteristic atmosphere that we find in the mid-latitudes. Although this can vary from season to season, these are just natural tendencies, so you can get a barotropic atmosphere even as far as 30 to 40 degrees north in the summer, 
that you can get a baroclinic atmosphere is deep and uh, as close to the equator as 20 to even 15 degrees north. But these are just some general rules of thumb on where you can find these uh, different atmospheres. So usually you'll find a baroclinic atmosphere on any given day, especially during the spring and autumn months, between about 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north, or 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south in the southern hemisphere, versus a barotropic atmosphere, which usually occurs in the tropical regions. But again, these are just natural, just rules of thumb, just normal tendencies. Of course, we can have deviations from normal, uh, something that we deal with quite a lot in the atmosphere. But just something to keep in mind that you can have barotropic atmospheres outside of these latitudes, and you can have a baroclinic atmosphere outside of these latitudes. And if just sort of a visual, <coughs> excuse me, just a bit more of a visual representation of barotropic versus baroclinic. So barotropic between 0 degrees north, 30 degrees north, Usually in the tropical regions, again, this can fluctuate and uh, vary depending on the state of the atmosphere itself. And in baroclinic, usually between about 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north, or 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south in the southern hemisphere. So that's going to do it for this first look at barotropic versus baroclinic atmosphere. And in the next segment, we're going to loosely tie this into a concept known as barotropic potential vorticity, or just simply potential vorticity. But we're also going to explore, contrast what we mean by potential vorticity versus other types of vorticity. So that'll be the subject of the next segment. So with that, I will see you all there.